Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the fernet serre frame of a curve. So if we're given a curve, R of S, which must be an arc length parameter, we define the following vectors. T hat of S is dr ds, the derivative of the curve with respect to arc length parameter, and this is the unit tangent vector. That's the advantage of putting a curve into arc length parameter. When you compute the derivative of a curve in arc length parameter, you know they will automatically be a unit vector. So this is the unit tangent vector to a curve. So if we have our curve over here, our space curve, It's an arc length parameter, so every length of part of the curve that has length 1 will correspond to a time step of 1. So this could be s equals 0, and this could be s equals 1. If I go from 1 to 2, that will also have a length of 1. So what we're doing is we're taking the s-axis, 0, 1, 2, of unit lengths, and we're mapping them onto the curve in such a way that the unit lengths are preserved. So that's our unit tangent vector. Then the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to s is referred to as the curvature vector. So this is our curvature vector. The curvature vector is not necessarily a unit vector. So what we'll do is we'll say that the length of the curvature vector is called the scalar curvature. Once we have the scalar curvature, we can write the following. We can define p hat of s to be equal to the curvature vector divided by the length of the curvature vector. So this forces it to be a unit vector. You divide a vector by its length, it becomes a unit vector. And this is called the principal normal vector. The principal normal vector on a curve, if we think about it, so if we have a curve like this, Here's my curve R of S. Then over here what we have is we have the tangent vector T hat of S. If I advance a little bit further, this will be T hat of S plus delta S. If we plot these curves over here, so here's T hat of S plus delta S, looks something like this. This is T hat of S plus delta S. And here is my T hat of S. And so this vector over here, would have to be, going from this tip to that tail, would be t hat of s plus delta s minus t hat of s. So this vector over here, the difference of these two vectors, will point inward to the curve. So this vector over here, I can move it just right over here to that point. And so we see what's happening is s gets very, very small. If I divide this by delta s, this will converge to the curvature vector, k of s. And so this vector will be pointing inward to the curve perpendicular to the unit tangent vector. And so we can see that algebraically as well. What we can do is we can note that since t is a unit vector, t hat of s dot t hat of s, is equal to 1. So if we differentiate this, we'll do the product rule. We'll have t hat of s times dt ds plus dt ds dot t hat is equal to the derivative of 1, which is 0. Now the dot product is commutative, so both those are the same. So we have that 2 t hat dot dt ds is equal to 0. So t and dt ds are perpendicular. So t, the tangent vector, and the curvature vector are perpendicular to each other, and the curvature vector points into the curve. So this gives us the first fernet serre equation. The first fernet serre equation, so this is fernet serre number 1, the first fernet serre equation says that dt ds well, this is the curvature vector, and the curvature vector is the curvature times the principal normal vector. So this is going to be the curvature, and the curvature, of course, is a function of s times p hat of s. So all these are functions of s because, as we can see from this, the curvature vector is changing. The length of this vector will change based on where you are on the curve. In fact, we can see, for example, 
if we were to look at this curve, for example, if we look at this curve over here, if r of s is r cosine of s over r i hat plus r sine of s over r j hat, you can check that this curve is a unit speed curve. And the second derivative of this curve, so r prime of s, will be equal to negative cosine, negative sine of s over r. So that derivative of cosine is sine. So we'll have a negative sine of s over r i hat plus cosine of s over r j hat. That's the unit tangent vectors of this curve, which happens to be a circle. This is my x and this is my y. Then x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And if I do the second derivative, I'll have a factor of 1 over r come out. So you can check for this curve that the curvature of this curve, the length of the second derivative, the scalar curvature, is 1 over r. And so that what this tells us tells us that the curvature of a circle whose radius is r is the reciprocal of r. So the larger r gets, the larger the radius of the circle becomes, the smaller the curvature becomes. You can imagine this as if we're thinking about being on Earth. On Earth, the radius of Earth is very large, and so we locally think of the curvature being relatively flat. But if we zoom out from Earth and we're standing on Mars, we see that the Earth is a circle. We can actually see the curvature exhibit there. Likewise, if I draw a really, really small circle, we can see that it has very, very large curvature, whereas a larger circle becomes more flat and has less curvature. So the curvature of a circle of radius r is the reciprocal of the radius. And this gives us a very important relationship that we'll see in future videos. Thank you very much.